Joe Biden in March 2022. The American Rescue Plan has resulted in historic economic growth. That was in quarter one, but this is what was really happening in quarter one. First quarter GDP declined 1.5%, worse than thought, jobless claims climb. So this build back better ain't doing much of building at all. It's actually on the verge of a recession. One more GDP with negative growth, we get a recession and that's very likely to happen. So how are you gonna keep lying in the face of those numbers, Joe? Come on. I'm Tyler Zed. Welcome to Zeducation. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another episode of That Didn't Age Well. This is the longest running series on Zeducation. And here on this series, if you've never seen an episode, we highlight hypocritical and lying politicians, mainstream media, and celebrities and entertainers. And we have a lot to go over today. Hillary Clinton, Amber Heard, uh, some Republicans. We got a lot of stuff to cover today, a lot. I'll preface it by saying the swamp is alive and well. But first, before we get into today's video, if you like this type of content and you're looking for more, we have a lot more at zedmedia.substack.com, including two Substack exclusive That Didn't Age Well episodes over on the page, as well as the morning show every Monday through Friday at 7.30 a.m. Central. Hope to see you over there. But first, we need to get into today's list. So if you are ready for today's episode of That Didn't Age Well, head down and like this video. And if you are new here, please make sure you are subscribed and have the bell clicked for notifications when new videos are uploaded. Now on to today's list of things that didn't age well. Number 10, back to the economy. If you recall last year, politicians, the Fed, big banks, they were all saying inflation was transitory. Check this out. From Bloomberg, on October 11th, 2021, Goldman, JP Morgan say buy the dip as inflation is transitory. Transitory. You guys remember that phrase, that lie? Everyone with a brain that knows the basics of economics knew this wasn't transitory, but they went ahead and lied and told you to buy the dip anyways. Flash forward to now, these same places are saying this. On May 19th, Goldman, JP Morgan strategists see recession fears as overblown. So the message now is recession fears, minus 1.5% GDP, that's not a big deal. They're going with the Joe Biden narrative, but they were wrong last year about transitory. So the chances of them being wrong about this as well, very, very likely. Number nine, in Washington, D.C., money grows on trees. They just print it off out of thin air. We know this. This has happened for decades, ever since we got rid of the gold standard. But in recent years, it's gotten even worse. But a lot of that money goes overseas. Check this out. May 19th, Senate passes 40 billion Ukraine aid package. Money for overseas, right? So let's send it overseas. Let's print it off out of thin air. Send it overseas. But when it comes to money for you at home in America, this is what they do. On the same exact day, by the way. Senate blocks 48 billion aid package for restaurants, other small businesses. Same exact day. So 40 billion for foreigners, for people across an ocean, no money for you. That's how Congress views you. That's where you are on the priority list. It's really sad. And this is bipartisan, by the way. Republicans and Democrats voted for both of these things. Number eight. Speaking of Republicans, speaking of the bipartisan swamp, check out this Freudian slip for the ages from George Bush. Check this out. The result is an absence of checks and balances in Russia and the decision of one man to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq. I mean, of Ukraine. <laughs> Iraq, too. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> 75. Uh. <laughs> eh? You know, the real truth is coming out now. He's 75, though, guys. Reminder, Joe Biden is 79. So if he's in this state, well, you know, what, what about Joe? There is some positive news, though. The Bush family reign may be over officially. Check this out. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxson defeats George P. Bush in GOP primary in bid for re-election. So... The, the last remaining Bush in politics just got beat in the primaries. Great news. Great news for the country moving forward. Hopefully no more Bush family members ever run for office again. That would be a great thing for the country. Number seven. 
We see time and time again on social media, especially on Twitter, people posting things with uh, zero, zero self-awareness. Like this example here. So this lady tweeted this, I don't really tell jokes, but I've laughed at many good jokes about rape. If you don't like a joke, don't laugh. But people can make jokes about anything they want. You know, some people will get offended at that. Some people say you can't make jokes about certain things, but freedom of a speech, you know, you say what you want. If you don't like it, you ignore it. That is the message here. If you don't like something, ignore it. This guy, he decided he didn't like this statement and he went to Twitter and he thunder thumbed it and said this. I don't understand this at all. I'm a bloke of 48 years with a pretty body sense of humor who hasn't exactly led a sheltered life, but I've never once heard anyone I know tell a joke about rape and neither have I. Same guy last November made this joke on Twitter. Don't drop the soap, Andrew. That's a joke about the R word. It is. You said you never did that. That wasn't even that long ago. Lack of self-awareness, man. Uh, by the way, I already know YouTube is not going to like this video. There's, We have some other examples here coming too that YouTube's not going to like. So as a reminder, head over to zmedia.substack.com um, and make sure you are subscribed here and you share these videos because videos like these, uh, they're not going to be recommended. There's no way. So anyways, back to the point here. Lack of self-awareness. And if you don't like a joke, ignore it and move on. That's it. That's how easy it is. Number six. We have seen so many flip-flops between 2016 and 2020. There were people that said certain things in the media, and then now they completely ignore what they said in the past. For example, CNN, Jim Acosta. This is amazing. Look at this. In 2018, CNN reporter Jim Acosta blasts Kim Kardashian's trip to the White House. She shouldn't be here talking about prison reform. You know, I actually agree with him here. I really do. He, she, she shouldn't be there. What is she? Because she made a porno one time, she gets to have a platform at the White House. That's insane. She should have been there. Anyways, flash forward to now, Paris Hilton visits White House to advocate for institutionalized youth. Where are you on this one, Jim? Very similar situation. Very similar. But this one is promoted by CNN. There's nothing bad said about it. It's actually Paris Hilton's going to the White House. But back then, when Trump was doing it, it was a big deal and uh, orange man, right? By the double standard, CNN. Number five. On to another Biden disaster. Uh, take a look from the New York Times. When we got out of Afghanistan, this is what the Biden administration was saying about us leaving and handing the power over to the Taliban. Biden officials place hope in Taliban's desire for legitimacy and money. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and others say the prospect of recognition and financial aid from the United States can moderate the militant group. Some call that delusional. Some call that delusional, man. The Taliban can be moderate. They can, if we give them money and support, they can be moderate. They can shift. They can be more progressive, right? Nah, check this out. This is what happens now. Update, Afghanistan's supreme leader and Taliban chief on Saturday ordered the country's women to wear the all-covering burqa in public, one of the harshest controls imposed on the women's lives since the hardline Islamists seized power. Now, Taliban enforcing face-covering order for female TV anchors, non-negotiable. There was hope. There was hope. Biden, you know, there was hope. And little girls are not allowed to go to school now. In Afghanistan. That's a thing now, too. Very sad. Very, very sad. Just remind you, this is the Taliban. This is an extremist group. This is what they do. Like They had hope in this group. This is the same group that George Bush allegedly went over there to fight and get rid of. And now they handed power to them. It just doesn't make any sense. Absolute disaster. Number four. This one is absolute gold. Absolute gold. Take it from CNN here. Election deniers want to control the 2024 election, and they're getting closer. Freaking, don't you ever, 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 ever question anything about the voting process, ever. Which is really funny because this is the current press secretary and how she denied the election in 2016 and 2018. For real, this is the evidence out of her own mouth. These are her tweets. Reminder, Brian Kemp stole the gubernatorial election from Georgians and Stacey Abrams. He stole it. He stole the election. And here's another one. Stolen emails, stolen drone, stolen election. Welcome to the world of hashtag unprecedented Trump. Wow. An election denier is 
now the press secretary. Where are you on this one, CNN? How come you're not denouncing this election denier? As a real election denier. She's out of her own mouth. How come you're not denouncing that? Double standards, guys. We know this. We know this. Double standards. Number three. And now we get onto the part where YouTube's probably going to demonetize this video. Uh, if we're lucky, they won't. But they, they don't like anyone talking about this. But we're just going to point out some hypocrisies having to do with COVID. For example, Joe Biden here. When in October of 2020, he said 220,000 deaths. If you hear nothing else I say tonight, hear this. Anyone who is responsible for that many deaths should not remain president of the United States. Flash forward to now. Breaking, U.S. hits 1 million deaths from COVID-19. So arguably, well over half of those deaths happened under you, Joe. Um, and you had a vaccine, too. You didn't, uh, Trump, for the most part, didn't. So this is the fact. So you have over a million. You just said verbatim, anyone who's responsible for that many deaths should not remain president of the United States. So are you going to stick to that or are you just going to leave that jargon and ignore it? Like the, the dirty politician that you are. Probably that, but I just got to throw the question out there. Then we got the blue check marks. This is gold as well. Here we go. September 2021. Enough is enough. Make vaccines mandatory. Flash forward, same guy. The only person who should have control over your personal medical decisions is you, not politicians. You. Wait a minute. Hold on a sec. But you, you're talking about mandatory medical decisions. That was not that long ago. That was less than a year ago. What changed? What changed, guy? Blue check mark. What changed? I just, I want to know. Can you elaborate, please? And this, this one here from Joe, this is absolutely beautiful as well. This is, you know, dirty politics 101. Just make stuff up. Just make stuff up. And if you say it with confidence, then some people will believe you. So here's, here's Joe on this one. This is just absolute gold. The White House tweeted this. When President Biden took office, millions were unemployed and there was no vaccine available. But here's Joe. Look at this. This is before he took office in December. Getting the vaccine. You just said White House. You said there wasn't a vaccine available when he took office. Which actually even makes the, the fact that there's a million deaths even worse. Can you fix this White House? And how come this isn't flagged for misinformation, Twitter? Huh? You're so worried about misinformation. Um, where are you on this one? Where's the Ministry of Truth on this one? This is a lie, clearly. There's a picture of Joe getting it, so... I don't know. Number two. More dirty politicians lying. Remember? In Georgia, they're trying to pass all these terrible laws to suppress voting. Uh, even Hollywood. They were going to pull out all of their production from Georgia because of these oppressive just chaotic archaic voting rules that's what they were doing in georgia right even from the washington post georgia's new voting law signed by brian kemp on march 25th imposes a number of restrictions on voting in the state earning it comparisons to the jim crow laws that effectively blocked black men and women from voting in the american south ooh, ooh, i can't believe they're doing that in georgia but this is what actually happened during the primaries. Same place, Washington Post, May 21. After three weeks of early voting ahead of Tuesday's primary, record-breaking turnout is undercutting predictions that Georgia Election Integrity Act of 2021 would lead to a fall-off in voting. Wait a minute, but they just implemented Jim Crow-era laws. Ooh, what happened there, Washington Post? You fear-mongered so hard. Like, what happened to your lies? You knew they were lies when you were saying them. You did. Uh, but... How come they didn't come true? You know, I just, I just swamp swamp is alive and well. This is what happens. Number one. And speaking of the swamp, this is just beautiful. Do you guys remember when Hillary tweeted this and she started this false rumor? Computer scientists have apparently uncovered a covert server linking the Trump organization to a Russian based bank. October 31, 2016. Flash forward. Hillary Clinton personally approved plan to share Trump Russia allegation with the press in 2016, campaign manager says. So this lie, which we know is a lie, came directly from Hillary. That's her campaign manager throwing her under the bus. This is in a lawsuit. This is happening right now. 
and nobody seems to care. Also, Twitter, again, where is the false information? Where's the misinformation tag on this one? We're going to keep bringing this up until you flag this one because this is false and um, she needs to be held accountable. She was literally making things up to try and attract votes. And we have her campaign manager throwing her under the bus for this. Will anything happen? Probably not because that's what happens in DC. They all get away with it. Bonus. Bonus clip. The Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial is coming to an end. And we got a flashback to this beautiful, beautiful Instagram story by the UN Human Rights Council. Look at this. Meet human rights champion Amber Heard. <laughs> Look at this. They did a little profile. I will respect your rights regardless of who you are. Except for Johnny Depp, right? Look at this. Depp testifies Heard severed his finger after hurling vodka bottle at him. Just not his human rights. And I'm not defending Johnny Depp either. That guy seems like, I mean, it just wasn't a healthy relationship from both sides. But she's a liar. She totally is a liar. There's no doubt about it in my mind. And uh, you and human rights, only some human rights, obviously. What do you think about today's list? Which one is the, the most eye-opening example to you? Which one is the most frustrating? You know, you see the media like the Washington Post, you see them lie all the time like this. Uh, Hillary Clinton get away with stuff like this. George Bush basically coming out and saying, yeah, there's Iraq war, this Freudian slip. What do you what do you think about all of that? What do you think about all these politicians trying to manipulate Americans for votes? Let me know down in the comments. While you're down there, please like this video. Please help me get it recommended to others. That's it for today's video. Until next time, I'm Tyler Zed. This is education. I was going to foot him uh, foot, foot. Idiots.